Hello, this is Mr. White, and this video is Solving Equations with the Graphing Calculator by Finding X-Intercepts Part 2. I'm going to apologize in advance because somebody could rightfully criticize me for cramming too much content into this video. And so I'm going to see how this goes. Uh, uh, students, let me know, um, give me some feedback as to whether I should have split this up into several videos or whether you were able to grasp everything. All right. Okay, let's jump on in. Um, let me first address something that you may have noticed in the last video. Um, there's something strange going on with this y value here. Uh, in the last video, we solved a quadratic equation by finding the, the uh, x-intercepts. And again, that was here, that was one of the x-intercepts, and we found the other x-intercept here. And you know that for x-intercepts, we're supposed to get, at this point, we're supposed to get a y value of zero. That's what makes it lie on the x-axis. But look at what we actually got. This is a huge source of confusion for students who aren't used to seeing this. Uh, so let me explain what's going on here. Sometimes your calculator does this. And, and maybe when you tried this, maybe the calculator said 0, or maybe it gave you something weird like this. Uh, what your, it may surprise you to know your calculator is far from perfect. And sometimes it is off just a tiny, tiny bit. Um, what your calculator is displaying here is it in its various algorithms for coming up with a solution, it came up with a y value of negative 1 times 10 to the negative 12th power, and it basically, basically said, you know what, that's close enough to 0, so I'm going to stop. Uh, let me remind you why, uh, how, how small a number this is. If I were to write this, this out in decimal form, it would be negative 0.00000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
And rather than wait for this the slow TI-84 calculator to display, um, I can just dynamically in real time here change my window settings. And notice how when I have a, a, a Y min and a Y max that are much larger than the default values, um, that this graph starts to look like something a little more reasonable. So you may be wondering, Mr. White, how do I make this happen on my TI-84 or TI-83? And let's go back and address that. Okay, so here is uh, the calculator. Let me, let me just blank this out here. Let me go back to this. Okay, and here's the first big tip. This one takes a little getting used to. Please listen carefully. Please, please, please follow along on your calculator. Pause the video. Uh, um, make sure you're getting this, because this is a, a very useful technique that you'll want to use all year long. Okay, so the idea is I have a sense that the graph is it's kind of coming up here to, to the visible part of the screen and then going really far down below the, the screen and then coming, shooting back up very quickly. Here is tip number one. Tip number one is to go to trace. Trace rides the cursor along the curve, whether it's on the screen or not. So right now, I see, look at these coordinates here. X equals zero and Y is negative 2100. That's way off the screen, but that tells me right there that this graph exist far below the x-axis. And while still in the trace mode, go ahead and use the arrow keys and let's see what happens. I can go to the left and notice that as I go to the left to these negative x values here, the y values are, are starting to rise. They're rising up and I see that the y value here, it's briefly on the screen, but if I keep going it goes back off the screen. I'm going to go back to the, to the right here. And again, when I'm sensing that these are negative values, I want to see how low does it go. So let's keep an eye on those Y values and see just how negative does it get. And we're going to use that information to set our Y min settings in the window. Okay, so again, keep an eye as I arrow to the right on these Y values. Right now it's negative 839. Again, please follow along on your calculator, pausing as necessary. Um, it's getting down into the negative 3,000s, negative 4,000s, negative 5,000s, and that is where it seems to, to reach its minimum. So that gives me an idea that if I want to see the low point on this graph, I need to go to a Y min setting that, that will capture or will include that negative 5184 or so. And I see that at that point it's starting to rise back up. And eventually, if I get lucky, I may even see the cursor on the screen here briefly. Sometimes we don't. Notice that now I'm, I, it's back up here to the uh, uh, to positive Y values. Okay, so again, let's go to the window settings here. Go to the window button. And remember that the minimum number that we saw was somewhere around negative 5, 5100 or so. Um, let's be conservative here. Let's go ahead and just round that to negative... 6,000. Let's just stick with the Y min for now and see how that looks. And when you hit graph, you should see something that looks like this. Um, now, I don't know about you, but I, just a, a little personal preference. I don't like seeing just below the X axis. I'd like to see a little further above. So um, I don't have to do this, but I'm going to choose to go ahead and go to my window settings. And if I'm seeing 6,000 below the Y value, the, the, the X axis, I don't need to see real high above, but I'm just going to somewhat arbitrarily say 1,000. Again, you don't have to do that. You'll, you'll kind of develop a, a taste for this on your own. But when I graph that, at least, uh, again, I'm a little weird that way. I just like seeing a little extra room here above the X axis. So let's take a look at what we got here. Let me drag this here. And let me remind you where we are interested in focusing here. We are looking for solutions to that equation, and we ex expect those solutions to occur somewhere around here and somewhere around here. But it might be tempting to think there's only those two solutions. It turns out there's actually three we'll see. But let's, let's just focus on, on, on one of them, and then we'll see where the other two uh, occur. There's really two solutions right here. Um, but don't worry if you don't see them right now. Let, let's focus on this one right here, and then we'll worry about those other two. So back to the, uh, to the graphing calculator here. Um, 
remember what we did in the first video. I'm going to do that pretty quickly here. See if you can pause the video and, 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 and beat me to it. Uh, I want to find this uh, uh, solution right here. So I'm going to go to second calc. And remember, let's hit number two here to get zero, calc zero. And I'm going to use that shortcut that I showed you where we just type in our left and right bound. You, you could use these arrow buttons, but I'm going to look at the little, uh, little tick marks here, and I'm going to approximate that my solution lies somewhere around one, two, three, four, five, six, a little hard to tell. So I think my solution is somewhere around five or six-ish. Um, so my left bound, what's to the left of five or six? How about we type in four? That's a number to the left of five or six. There's my left bound, and now it's prompting me for a right bound. If I think my solution is five or six, let me type in seven for my right bound. And if I've done my left and right bound correctly, um, I don't have to worry about guess. I just hit enter. Oh, and look at that. My solution is five exactly. So that is one of our solutions right there. X equals five. Okay, but let's uh, uh, go back and worry about these other two um, solutions. I'll go ahead and record that first one that we got. X equals 5. That's one of them. But I can imagine that somebody could be looking at this video and going, you know what, I still don't see the other two solutions that Mr. White keeps talking about. So here's another really useful trick. I don't use it all the time, but, but sometimes it comes in handy. Um, let's go to the Zoom window. And just watch how this one works, uh, um, and I think you'll figure it out. I'm going to do zoom box. And again, just watch what I do, and I think it'll make sense. I'm going to arrow. I, I want to see a closer look at what's going on right here. So I'm going to arrow over, and I'm going to get my cursor to be right in the vicinity of where all that action is taking place. Uh, I say all that action is taking place. I see action there. I don't know if you do. Um, I'm going to hit enter here. And you may not know what I'm doing quite yet, but just keep watching. I think it'll make sense. I'm arrowing down after having hit enter. And now I'm arrowing over. And we see that I've just defined that I'm defining the two corners of a box. And this box, you may anticipate, I'm going to zoom in on that, that little box there. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And it is going to zoom in on that box that I just defined. And you still may not be convinced that there are two solutions there, so I'm going to do that again. I'm going to go to Zoom, Box again, Zoom, Enter. And once again, I'm going to zoom in even closer. Okay, and let's hit enter again. And it's very subtle, but you might be able to detect, you know what, it looks like this may be um, touching the, the x-axis in two locations. Um, I could do zoom box one more time. Uh, I'm going to try something somewhat on a whim here. Um, see if you can figure out what I'm doing here. That, that y min and y max, I just went to the window settings. You may be surprised, those are still fairly large numbers. So let me make those a little smaller. And let's see if you um, can see why this makes sense. Let me just make this negative 10, positive 10. Um, if you're not getting this, again, definitely come to office hours and, and, and ask for clarification on this. But when I do that, voila, I see that there, what looked like one solution, there are really two solutions here. So let's figure out what those two solutions are. I'm going to go back to my graphing calculator. And let's go ahead and I'm going to go to second calc um, zero again. Hit, hit number two. And this time, rather than type in numbers, I find like here it's a, here it's a little bit easier to use the arrow. So it's prompting me for a left bound. Again, please follow along if you want to get the most out of this video. Enter. Right bound. Enter. Guess. There we go. There's one solution. 
Let's go ahead and do the other one. I'm going to do this a little bit quickly because hopefully this part is making sense. This was in the first video. Hopefully you've practiced that skill a little bit. Okay, left bound, enter. Right bound, enter, guess. Okay, so if you remember from uh, a couple minutes ago, we had one solution, which was x equals 5. We just found our second and third solution. I'm going to write them a little bit bigger here and put a big old circle around it. Now, are all the equations we solve going to be that much work? Um, no, no. So, but, but the point is, hopefully if you got through this one, if this made sense, you'll feel confident that you can tackle the, the uh, majority of problems or equations that we do come across. Those are our three solutions. Those are our three x-intercepts. Those are our three zeros um, to that equation. We have just done it graphically. All right, so here are some of the highlights of this video. Um, I start off by explaining this is something, by the way, that I suggest maybe if you're wondering how do I capture this on paper, how, what should I write down in my notes. Uh, you might want to put a note there reminding you that we determined that this is basically just zero. Um, if you didn't already know, that little caret key is what we use to create our exponents. Um, second insert, I was going to cover that, but I realized this video is already a, a little bit intense, so I'll get into that some other day. Um, I recommended, remember that when you do a new, when you start a new problem, especially if, if I remind you, if I go back to this, let's go to those window settings. You can probably imagine that those window settings here that where we left off are not going to be the same window settings you want for the next problem. So get in the habit of starting off each new problem by going to zoom standard, and that just resets everything to negative 10 and 10. Um, I mentioned using trace, and, and, I, and I realized Oh, shoot, I forgot to uh, mention table. Let me throw it in here real quickly, but then I'll save it for another time to get into more detail. Let me suggest that you go back here and you go to second table, and that's another good tool you can use. You can arrow up or arrow down in the table, and you may wonder why I didn't leave off with that one. You may like that one a lot better. This is a good uh, uh, way of seeing what kind of y values you're dealing with. We can see that we're dealing with y values that get into about negative 5100 range through the table instead of using trace. So again, play with that on your own. See if you can uh, make that one work. Um, we looked at the, uh, uh, we used that to adjust our window settings. And finally, zoom box was a useful tool for really focusing in on a small part of the graph. So I know that was a lot. Again, students, please give me feedback. Was that too much for one video? Um, I know it's going a little bit long here. But let's see if you absorbed all that. Let's go ahead and have you try one on your own. OK, so again, go ahead and pause the video at this point and try to solve that one on your own graphically. Uh, in just a moment here, I'm going to go ahead and reveal the, the answer. So again, pause this, solve graphically, and then hit play and see if your answers match mine. All right, here are the solutions to this one. Uh, we should get x equals negative 3, x equals 6.6, .6, and x equals 